the bottom line is I've got now my my line here is correct and you can see that if I right click and go back to the object viewer I'll just flip it straight up sideways here and you can see that's a grade line now a feature line that actually steps down at the front of my lots and that's kind of cool now one more thing I'm gonna do whoops let's not do it there let's do it the, the let me show you where you would have done it I would have gone here and gone to the uh, feature line properties and changed the style don't need to do that anymore the properties are up here come on feature line properties right there okay so when I do that now I can change whatever I wanted to change up here okay like my style I'm gonna change that to a instead of these CRs I'm gonna go up and make it a corridor uh, da, 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 not a, a corridor daylight because it technically is gonna daylight back here to the pads and so when I do that now you'll see that that actually changes to that style it being a different color and it might plot differently etc etc we can always make them uh, invisible okay so when we finish all this stuff and we want to go out there and make it plot correctly as uh, as I've taught before you can make it get rid of these purple lines going this way you can make it get rid of the grade lines that you don't need anymore etc all right now now I've got this this feature line back here now for those of you who don't know you can have your corridor tied into a feature line well that's kind of cool now watch this I'm just gonna take my corridor here I'm gonna right click and go to corridor properties and I'm basically gonna insert a region well I'm gonna split this sorry I'm gonna split this region and I'm gonna split it right there at that corner okay so at that station whatever it is it's gonna put in a split region right there and I'm gonna put in another one down here and then I'm gonna hit enter and you'll see now that it's got three regions one two three okay now I'm gonna hit OK for a moment because you're not gonna see anything change but I want to show you what I've done to the uh, to the assemblies okay the first assembly that I was using is this one right here so it has the typical two to one to daylight over here and over here and if you're not familiar with my naming convention 32 foot wide 6 inch curb and gutter 4 foot sidewalk 2 to 1 to daylight now I've made another one down here and this title down here is incorrect so I'm gonna get rid of that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the real title here. I'm going to go to Properties. And there's my real title. So I'm going to do a Control C on that one. Jump back into my drawing and do a Control V. And that just basically puts my title back down there. There we go. So that's what this thing is called now. It's called 32 foot wide, 6 inch curb and gutter, 4 foot sidewalk, dash pads. And that dash pads only means that I've got a new item right here, which happens to be a sub-assembly and when I created that subassembly I put it as a a title of left slope to pads and that subassembly let me just go down here and show you which one it is that subassembly is on the generic tab and it's down here called link width and slope so I'm linking from some point here out to some other point by a width and a slope now yes I could designate the width and the slope but in this case I'm not going to I'm actually going to physically make this point of my uh, assembly link to the other feature line that I drew down there okay in other words I'm going to have it so that from this point here at the back of, of wherever this sidewalk is it's going to link all the way back to this so it's going to grade this area right in here for me automatically and that's the whole concept that's kind of nice and, and it's actually very powerful because now if I change anything I can change and I can raise and lower my my corridor or I can change and raise and lower my pads by this feature line here and anything I change the grading in between is gonna stay the same so it's kinda cool alright so let's show you how to do that and when I right click again go back down oops got two two things selected so that didn't work corridor properties and this time all I need to do is change this right here to the two to one uh, sorry to the pads uh, assembly that I talked about and then of course I have to go set my targets now the reason I called that thing left slope to pads is because you can see you can have lots of stuff down here and not a, not know exactly what they are because sometimes these things are rather uh, strange at the best <laughs> so uh, first thing I need to do is set that as, as existing ground so I've got all my target surfaces set but this one right here now needs to know what width or offset target it's going to go to and so clicking right there you will notice that normally it goes to an alignment 
this is this is how you uh, let's say do a street widening for those of you who've been through my advanced corridors class you know this is how you do a street widening or a right turn lane or anything of that nature well in 09 they've come up with this new ability now to link to a feature line a survey figure and polyline so that's kind of cool now all I need to do is say select it from the drawing go get that feature line right there and of course it gives me this warning here that says it's unnamed now I haven't told you about the naming feature yet that's okay but I want to name the feature lines using the default I don't want to discard it okay I want to use it and I can go back and rename it later right now it's just called feature line 2 okay that's fine I don't care hit OK so now this basically means that the width of this thing is going to stretch to meet feature line 2 well that's great but now we have to also set this one down here which is the slope or the elevational targets so I do the same thing here get the same one okay they're both the same hit enter hit OK and now I've got all my targets set okay there it is um, this little this portion of this webinar that I'm doing today that little five minutes that I did right there is probably going to be on a YouTube video very shortly on my YouTube channel so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK here and you're gonna see what happens and there you go I mean it, it, it physically went all the way out you can see the red lines or the magenta lines or whatever now the only thing I want to change and I forgot about this one uh, I want to go back now and, and fix something just very quickly I'm gonna change the frequency at this particular region uh, down to about three feet I'm doing that for a reason you don't have to and you can do it if you want it's, it's up to you okay so now it's much better be and I did that because it otherwise you wouldn't have seen this slope in here okay there's a slope right in here that you wouldn't have been able to see otherwise so now I'm gonna pick my corridor well first things first I'm gonna save my drawing I usually end up crashing this thing at least once throughout my uh, webinars so that's okay all right so I'm gonna click on that one I'm gonna right click and go to the object viewer just so you can see now what it's done all right there's my object viewer and if I flip it around here let's move it up a little bit on that side there we go let's move it up here and zoom in and you'll be able to see here those pads okay so it starts out as a straight grade down here and you can see that it's physically doing its thing over here on the right side there it goes down between the pads along the top of the pad down to the next pad so I don't know how long that would take you to do uh, by other methods but this to me is just really slick I, I totally enjoy that one so but then you know hey I did this stuff by hand so and I'm older so I get I have the uh, the right and I'm allowed to get excited about some of this stuff